them. All right, everyone, Cody here. Still working on my heavy water project. As you can see, this is what I have left. That is approximately 20 milliliters, possibly less. It's had this vial. I've just been electrolyzing it down. I started about there. That's uh, where I had it in that uh, glass beaker that I showed in the last episode. Brought her down to about uh, half of that, and uh, that's about all I can do, because you can see the electrode didn't go all the way to the bottom of the jar. Anyway, I did collect the hydrogen off this, and I'm keeping it inside of a big bag. I uh, haven't figured out how to turn it into water without causing an explosion yet, so maybe I won't even work on that in this uh, set of experiments. But I should be able to tell right now if this solution contains more deuterium than normal water by using an accurate scale. So, but first I've got to get rid of the sulfuric acid. That should be pretty easy, so I'll break this open. Get rid of my lead electrodes there. I'm going to get rid of the acid by putting it into some uh, dehydrated sodium carbonate. This should react and form sodium sulfate and release water. Hopefully I don't lose too much to evaporation. Alright, so I'm uh, very carefully distilling it here. You can see I'm just heating the top of the solution so I can get it to boil up and then go down and condense in this tube and I'm holding my beaker down there in a cup of cold water to help it condense. Right, looks like we're just about there. I'm just, uh, looks like I just got molten salt now. I'm going to go ahead and keep dehydrating it. Alright, there we have it. Looks like I got about uh, between 10 and 15 milliliters of pure water here. This is double distilled, even passed it through a couple of pieces of uh, activated carbon to make sure it's completely deionized. And I guess now it's time to go weigh it and see if uh, I have any heavy water in there at all. So we are here with Arthur Eby. He got us access to the organic chemistry lab, which has a scale which goes out to four decimal places. So we can weigh, weigh things very accurately. All right, so I just zeroed out this graduated cylinder here. We're going to fill this up to the 10 milliliter line. I think this ought to be quite accurate. Probably shouldn't drop. Have all the bubbles in there, huh? Okay, let's use the beaker now. Try to keep it off the sides so we don't get that contamination. Of course. Yeah. Is it the bottom of the meniscus that we put it? Yeah, right from the bottom of the meniscus. One more drop. There you go. And that should do it. Yep. That should be pretty dang close. Let's see how we did. Oh, 10.086. Okay. So I got this opened up for you. And we're going to try to take. Let's bring this over. Excellent. So we got exactly 8 milliliters in here. And this is teared to the weight of the flask. Let's see what it weighs. 8.32. I took the liberty of uh, figuring out the density for the first one. Oh, it was 1.0083. Fabulous. It was 1.04 grams per milliliter, which is heavier in the is it a second decimal place? Yeah. Sweet. That's it. From that, we might be able to figure out how much deuterium we have in there. I have a spreadsheet on my computer to look at. Okay, so I've got the percentage of the heavy isotope in here. And uh, this is the weight of it was pure heavy. And anyway, we go over to here to the weight of one milliliter at this percentage. And the weight of our one milliliter was, what was it, 1.04? Okay, 1.045, okay, this one right here, 1.04. So go over here. Does that, does that really mean I got 40% heavy? I think so. About that. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkable. Well done, Mr. Cody. Let's do a few more trials to see if we're, uh, see if that's accurate. I, I think that's a bit high. So we've done the experiment to, uh, couple more times to make sure our, uh, we're getting an actual accurate measurement. We even adjusted for temperature because water as it heats up it expands and we, you know, we, we adjusted for the fact that this was uh, 1.09 instead of the 
exactly one. So we figure that it's between 20 and 30 percent heavy water. Basically, uh, our solution here is about between 20 and 30 percent deuterated, which means it contains probably about, yeah, we, we, we figured it's the maximum it contains is 2.4 grams of heavy water inside this sample. All right, so we figured out that that little vial of water was denser than the normal distilled water was. More than I was expecting, like by at least twice as much more. I was only expecting to have less than a gram's worth of heavy water there. Now it is possible that I do have more if the battery electrolyte I was using contained more deuterium than I was expecting. It's possible I have more heavy water in there. I've been brainstorming ways that that could have ended up being more heavy. You know, there's experimental error, but it wouldn't be that much. It could possibly be some like vaporized salt going up through my distillation apparatus. But the water tasted normal. It didn't, it wasn't salty. It was just water. So I think there is one thing that might have caused it to be extra heavy. The fact is that electrolysis also concentrates heavy oxygen. See, there's oxygen isotopes which are heavier. And uh, the same thing, you know, the same mechanics going on with the oxygen is with the hydrogens. So it is possible that I have a little bit of oxygen-18 water in there as well. That would explain the fact that it's heavier. Now oxygen doesn't have a high separation factor as hydrogen would in this, but it also has a higher original abundance. So it's possible I could have like 10% heavy oxygen in there or something like that. Anyway, um, I would love to show you a bit of heavy water. I think I think the best thing for me to do is actually get it to the point where I can freeze it at a lower temperature, at a warmer temperature. Because the only thing you could do to water to make it freeze at a warmer temperature is to make it heavy. So a freeze it at a warmer temperature would definitely prove that it's heavy water. I could also perhaps do a few more tests. I would love to get a spectrograph analysis of it. That would be definitely very telling. Unfortunately, that costs a lot of money and I don't have access to it. So. Until then, I should have that to sample concentrated down even more by next week, hopefully. So I'll see you then.